everyone, I'm Kelsey. And I'm Haley. And we are dietetic interns at SLU working towards obtaining our master's degrees. Yeah, we are so excited to be here today. We want to start by giving a thanks to the City of St. Louis Department of Health for hosting us and for sponsoring this cooking demo. We're going to have a lot of fun with you guys today. So I would love for you guys to come in and like participate with us. And we got some questions for you and things like that. So just a little bit about us. Um, we both have our bachelor's degrees in dietetics, but from different universities in the Midwest. I went to Indiana University, and Kelsey went to University of Wisconsin Stout. Um, now we're roommates. Um, we're both interns, and we're really loving the St. Louis area. We're loving getting to know the area and all the fun stuff that you guys have going on all the time. Um, but today, we're, we're just going to go through some recipes for you. Um, but we are studying to be dietitians. So does anyone know like what a dietitian does? Does anyone want to answer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we do planned meals and things like that. We help people who have dietary restrictions, mm -hmm. like for renal failure. Anyone else? All right. Yeah, you're definitely right. Um, dietitians do many different things besides um, the clinical or hospital setting as well. Um, they can work in community setting, like the dietitians here in Nutrition Services. Um, so today, they're, um, we are talking about healthy holiday eating mm -hmm. and just uh, local produce in the winter months. Um, so what, um, what are some like strategies that you guys, or like traditional recipes that you guys make during the holidays? Anyone have any good ones, good suggestions? Sweet potato potatoes. Bites. Yeah. Yeah, lots of cookies. <laughs> yes. All right, so today I know a traditional food is usually mashed potatoes that appear on dinner tables around, um, but we'll be making ma uh, mashed cauliflower, um, so that's like a lighter um, but yummy alternative to mashed potatoes, as well as quick baked pears to add that extra sweetness. Um, so we think they taste delicious and we hope you guys do too and they make um, quick and easy um, alternatives or additions to your holiday uh, table. Yeah, so in front of you, you actually have two handouts. Um, one has the recipes that we'll be using today. We're using a slightly bigger scale, um, but those are great ones to use if you like the recipes that we make for you today. And then the other handout has two sides. One has a side about um, strategies for healthy eating over the holidays. And then the other one has some suggestions for where to get some good, fresh, local produce and what produce is in season during the winter months. So as we go through today, we're not only going to be cooking and having some fun, we also have a few learning objectives for you guys. So the first one is that we want to be able to give you at least one way that you can name that you can choose a healthier option over the holiday season. And then the second is to equip you to be able to identify two in-season fruits and vegetables that you can pick up in the winter months. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I don't know about you guys, but during the holidays, I definitely tend to go or overboard with eating. Um, and it's actually not uncommon. The average American gains between one to two pounds um, over the holiday season, which may not seem like a lot, but over the years that can really add up. And no wonder um, people have the New Year's resolution of going to the gym more, or losing weight, because the holiday is really it does hard. <laughs> um, so we're going to start making the garlic mashed cauliflower. And per serving, this recipe only costs about a dollar to make. So it's really inexpensive um, addition to, your, uh, to feed to your families. Um, it also is only about 122 calories um, per serving, which is about 50% less than traditional mashed potatoes, which is definitely great. Wouldn't you guys agree? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good. Um, so here I have some already pre-softened cauliflower. Um, in the recipe, you actually boil um, fresh cauliflower for about five to six minutes. But for time and equipment's sake, we decided to do it this way. Um, so I'm just going to pop that into the microwave so it can be heated up for you guys. Yeah, so this morning we ran into our food slab. We made sure to pre-boil the cauliflower just because we don't have the equipment to do that for you. But it only takes about like five to 10 minutes to get the cauliflower softened, so it is a pretty quick process. Um, and so while the cauliflower is heating up, 
Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about cauliflower. So what do you guys know about cauliflower? You like it? Well, that's good, because we're going to eat some today. <laughs> Anything else? Anything that you've heard that cauliflower can be used for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I've heard of like buffalo, like cauliflower wings instead of chicken wings, or cauliflower steak. Um, cauliflower can also be used for like pizza crust or different bread substitutes. It's a really cool and versatile vegetable that like people might not think about. Originally, when you go into the grocery store, it's white. It looks a little bit, you know, bland, but it can be used in a ton of different ways. Um, so also cauliflower has great health benefits. It's full of B vitamins and fiber. And so that promotes like a healthy GI tract. And then it also has um, antioxidants, which can prevent against free radicals in your body. I mean, cancer, things like that. Um, it's a great, great vegetable. And we're excited to make some mashed potatoes with it today. And just for your reference for when you're actually um, boiling um, and cutting the cauliflower, um, this is probably the largest that you want to cut it. Um, it will soften and um, be easier to puree if it's about this size, just because there's, um, it's just smaller and overall quicker to soften. All right. Still going in the microwave? I believe so. So um, while that's going, how do you guys try to stay healthy during the holidays? Do you have any strategies or tips or anything? Yeah, portion, portion control, control is a big great. one for sure. Um, anything else? Exercise more. Yeah, exercise more, but like also if you just control a little bit with what you eat, I know there's like tons of holiday parties and there's cookies and there's pies and all that stuff, casseroles. Um, but if you just think about it as like, if you just eat normal amounts of food, what you would normally eat, then you don't have to work out like quite as much, but that is a good strategy. Uh, so some other strategies that I personally like to use are um, using a smaller plate a holiday meals. It, it still makes you fill up your plate, but you're actually eating less food. Um, one that I really like that I never really thought about before um, was to fill up your one small plate with like a salad or vegetables before you go up and get all the rest of the food so that you at least know that you got like some of those vegetables, some of those nutrients in there and before you go up to the other foods. Another great strategy that I like, because it rhymes, is eat the best and skip the rest. Um, I know like we feel inclined to pick up a little bit of everything onto our plate, but if you really don't like that mac and cheese or you really don't like that, you don't need to pick it up. Um, and then you can just save more room on your plate for the stuff that you really like and will really make you feel satisfied. And then one more is just to wait 10 minutes before going up for seconds. It really does make a difference with how your body feels like hunger because I know we're all excited to eat and everything, but if we take those extra 10 minutes, talk with our families a little bit or like walk around, it actually does, you might be more full than what you think you are. So if you wait those extra 10 minutes before going up for seconds, at least then when you go up for seconds, you'll have a better idea of how full you are. Cause you, yeah, because it's been shown that if you wait those extra 10 minutes, it signals your stomach that you're full. So it, your brain kind of has to catch up with your, um, hunger and stomach cues. Yeah, so it's, that's just a really easy tip too, just that 10 minute break. Um, but yeah, we also, I mean, choosing healthy holiday options too. I know we can't, I can't stay away personally. I love mac and cheese, baked mac and cheese is my absolute favorite. So I'm gonna get a big helping of that. But yeah, just not choosing the things like, if I didn't want the mashed potatoes or maybe have some cauliflower mashed potatoes instead. Does anyone have any other ideas or comments? Yes. Mm hmm You know, a lot of times meals are hungry or thirsty most of the time. So right. So a lot of times you're actually more thirsty than hungry. Yeah. Because you have a steady supply of water in the fridge, so that's going to help. Right. Time. Right, of course. Yeah, filling up on water and water specifically um, just because it does help you stay hydrated and it can fill you up more than other liquids. So. One um, more minute. On the one more minute on the cauliflower. <laughs> yes. Um, it is a big serving. It might take you slightly less when you do have a smaller serving. We just wanted mm -hmm. to be prepared for all of you guys yeah. and who are coming in. And of course, in. when you boil it, um, another, like, it'll be really warm as well. And on the recipe, so you don't have, like, watery 
mashed cauliflower, make sure to like um, really dry them off in between paper towels just because that extra water can make it less of a mashed potato consistency and more of just a puree water, not, mm -hmm. <laughs> not what you would like. <laughs> yeah. um, but while we're doing this, when you are serving, um, one a good tip to make it more um, mashed potato-like is to add butter or chives to the top, um, just to a sneaky way so your family members maybe won't notice that it's <laughs> mashed cauliflower. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I know we brought it to my uh, family gathering last year for um, my Thanksgiving, and my grandpa had some, and he did not notice that it was mashed <laughs> cauliflower. Tricking your family is what the holidays are all about. <laughs> so we got some hot cauliflower now? I think so. Great. All right. Let's see. So can I have um, one volunteer to scoop a little bit of the cauliflower into the blender? Come up and help us yeah. out. <laughs> Wonderful. And what's your name? <laughs> yeah, so you can just, yep, just put it right in here um, as much as you would like. So do I want to fill it up or? Um, only if you would like. <laughs> we have a pretty heavy duty blender, so it should blend pretty, pretty quick. Yep. Yeah, um, go for it. While they're doing this, one more holiday tip is to not skip meals. Um, I know that's really easy, especially like on Thanksgiving, which I know passed, but it's still a good thing to keep in mind for like holiday parties and uh, family well. get-togethers. Is like make sure you eat breakfast in the morning. Um, I know you're like, well, I'm gonna wait, and then you normally overeat if you are super hungry before like a feast like that. So this is two and a half. just picking mm -hmm. out something good for breakfast, something healthy for breakfast will really help you to not overeat at those holiday meals as well. Sounds good. All right, thank Perfect. you. All right, so just so it all blends up well, um, we're not gonna put all of it in right now, um, but she asked a very great question when she was up here. So what we had in this bowl, that was about two and a half heads of cauliflower. Um, so the recipe that you have in front of you is one head, um, so it'll be a little smaller and that makes four servings. Um, so this was two and a half heads. All right, so we're gonna go to um, putting our ingredients in. So we have um, Parmesan cheese and on your uh, recipes, it has the exact measure measurements. I doubled it just because of the increased amount of cauliflower. So we have um, Parmesan cheese. We have some chopped garlic. We have some cream cheese. And then we have a blend of salt and pepper. All right, and I'm gonna blend it up. Um, it is gonna be a little loud for a few moments, um, so bear with us. We're just gonna mix it up a little bit then. Get everything all blended. Yeah, so for this, you can use a blender like this one. A food processor also works. So whatever you have at home. Um, you can also, if the cauliflower is soft enough, you can mash it yourself. Mm -hmm. It just takes a few extra minutes. Um, so whatever you prefer, but we like this like um, blender right here. It does get the cauliflower really, really smooth. Mm -hmm. so. How do you, <laughs> got it this time. There we go. And you can blend it for as long or as short as you guys would like. It just depends on um, your preferred consistency. Um, so right now, Pretty good. 
Um, so it looks like that. Um, and we are just going to um, add a little bit more cauliflower so you all can have a chance to sample it. Mm -hmm. Has anyone had something like this before? No, no. I've had. Um, I saw you nodding your head. Did you? Um, did you like it? Oh, oh yeah. Did, have yeah. you had it before? Yeah, I've had uh, cherry cauliflower before. Okay. Cauliflower rice. Mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, but every time I bake it, it's really wet. And so mm -hmm. I'm really glad you said to dry it. Mm -hmm. Because it's always like that consistency when you bake it. So that's yeah. Why I've been messing up. Yeah. That's good, yeah. And these, these um, we made these many times in the past. They're really good, so I'm really excited to have you guys try them out. Um, and they do have like a, the same, a similar texture to mashed potatoes, especially with that cream cheese and everything in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, like you said, cauliflower can also be used like for rice and things like that. You can just find that in frozen bags in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty cool substitute. All right, hopefully one more time. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure you could. Yeah. That would be really yummy. Yeah. To you could put a little bit more cheese on top, put it back in the oven. Yeah. All right. I think it is good. Great. So I'm just going to um, really just scoop out some samples for you guys and toss them out. Yeah. So um, this mashed cauliflower, like I said, it's super super yummy it's only around a dollar per serving you got you guys are going to get a little bit less than a serving today just because we gotta feed all of you um and it is lower in calories than mashed potatoes even with that extra added cream cheese you can add some butter on top or some chives um, but it just overall is a lighter option um, to mashed potatoes all right perfect So um, on your handout, you also have, like on the side that has the healthy holiday options, um, there are some holiday swaps on there. So mm -hmm. some things that you could choose instead of something else. Yeah, so do any of those look good to you guys? Pass it around. Any that you would try? I'll do a dark chocolate I know, those sound amazing, right? Yeah. And I know there's tons of Christmas cookies over the se holiday season with like all that frosting. They're beautiful. Don't get me wrong. And they're so yummy. But making your own like oatmeal dark chocolate chip cookies are still really really yummy and they're a healthier option so you can still get um, that like sweetness uh, craving in but you are doing it in a healthier way and I know online there are recipes for that you can look on Pinterest or just search online for a healthy oatmeal chocolate chip yeah. recipe um, another thing on there is like I know like green bean casserole I love um, but substituting in just like roast the roasted green beans or something like that you can put on some lemon, you can put garlic, you know, salt, pepper, things like that to make them taste really, really good. And if you roast them in the oven, um, then they taste really good as well. And it can, it's less calories than green bean casserole for sure. Yeah, and you can always like mess with it however you wanna make the recipe as well. You can add different seasonings in. Um, we did a fairly basic version of it today, but you can always add in like those chives, the butter, you can add in more garlic. I'm always one for more garlic, um, but, yeah, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Well, so we're making quick baked pears today. Um, it's a super easy recipe. We can finish it pretty quick. Um, it's only 82 cents per serving, which is pretty crazy. And I know like these pears that I bought, we bought these on Saturday at Schnucks. They were on sale three pears for five or three pounds for five dollars, something like that. So it's a great deal. I chose these pears. I like the brown ones. I just like the way that they taste a little bit better. But you guys can use whatever kind of pears that you want to use. You can use the green ones. We will be peeling off the skin, so they'll look the same. I just like the softness and the taste of these ones a little bit better for this recipe. Okay, so um, when it comes to pears, there's actually like a, the best way to cut them for this recipe. So what you do in this scenario is you sit it up on its butt like that, and then let me get my knife out. So then you're going to cut down the middle of the pear just like this. was a little bit tricky there we go okay 
So now we have the two halves of the pair. Looks really good. I'm very excited about this. Mm -hmm. And then um, in order to get the stem out, normally the stem comes on like around one side. In order to get the full stem out, just cutting it off the top doesn't do it. Um, normally you should use like a V cut at the very top of the pair to make sure that you get all of the stem out. And then when you are cutting, I wasn't a good example of it for that move there, but you want to use the bear claw approach. So bending your fingers in a little bit so that you don't it reduces the risk of injury, and I know that there's a lot of injuries around the holiday season mm -hmm. relating to Because if you have cooking. your fingers out, it's very easy to just mm -hmm. cut the tips of your fingers, which we want to yeah. avoid a hospital visit during the holidays. Oh, yes. It's busy. So there we go. This one's pretty easy, but I got that stem out there. So then you have the V-cut here. And then what you want to do is take a regular spoon. You can also, I mean, you can use whatever tool you want to use for this, but we're going to scoop out the seeds in the middle. Um, so you can just dig in like this, just a little bit. Make sure to get all of the seeds out. These pears, there we go, perfect. So now you have a little like reservoir in there too to put things in. Um, does anyone want to come up and help me scoop out the insides of the other pears? Anyone? I'll take any help. <laughs> come on. <laughs> It's really quite easy. It's easy. We got it. Anyone? Okay. Well, I'll show you guys how the rest of the recipe works out, and then I'll work on getting the rest of them scooped out. So um, with these, we're going to peel these pears um, so that we can get all the different juices and the cinnamon and sugar to soak in. So you can just use a regular peeler. Pears are a little bit tricky just because of their shape. Um, so you just want to peel off the skin like that. It is a little bit easier to peel pears when they are a little bit harder. Um, and these will be cooked, so they're not gonna taste hard once you cook them. Um, so for this recipe, I would actually suggest getting pears that like weren't as ripe. Um, because as having them in the microwave really ripens them up too. It makes them sweeter and more uh, juicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I actually did this recipe, I tried it out for the first time a while ago, and I made the mistake um, that I'll tell you guys next, like when we go into the next step, but you're supposed to put apple juice into the bottom of this little pie pin, pie tin here. And Kelsey can attest to this. I tried to do it without the apple juice and the pear fully dehydrated and it was like It shrunk so down to small. like half the size. Yeah, but it still tasted good. Don't get me wrong. It was still very good, but it just was not as aesthetically pleasing. Okay. So here one, I did not cut the stem off of this one yet, so I'm gonna do that. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so for this recipe, I am using a little circular pie dish. You can use any kind of glass dish that you want. I think that this one has like the best shape for what we wanna do. So um, really just anything that's microwave safe. Yeah, yeah. And what we're gonna do now um, is I have a mix of cinnamon and sugar here. Um, it's about four teaspoons of sugar to one teaspoon of cinnamon. Um, you can do whatever mix you want. I feel like you can never have too much cinnamon. I love cinnamon. Um, but you're going to take this and sprinkle it over the pears like that. Awesome. And then I do have a mixture here of cranberries and granola. And so for this granola, I did use um, Special K granola just because it was like a little bit lower fat. Um, you can use any brand of granola that you would like. Some of them come with like almonds in them. Some of them come with raisins, things like that. So you can use really whatever you like. Um, I just chose a low-fat version for this like healthy holiday um, recipe. And then I just have regular Schnucks dried cranberries that you can buy at the store as well. And so what I'm going to do with this mixture is scoop it in to the pears here. There we go. And then, like I said, we don't want to forget about the apple juice that will pour over the pears, but I'm going to do that as soon as I get the other pears peeled and ready to go. Okay. So while Haley is um, peeling and cutting the pears, we are going to talk about what um, produce you can buy in the winter months. Um, so what are some uh, fresh fruits and vegetables that you guys usually like to buy during the winter? Mm -hmm. Clementines. Those ones are my favorite, the little cuties. I love those. What did um, citrus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I know I personally really like to buy like 
spaghetti squash or acorn squash, apples. Um, pears are a really good winter produce um, because uh, so you can buy a ton of produce in the winter months um, on your handout that you have. It has a list of um, fresh produce that you can buy during um, the winter, even when it's cold. Um, so it can be like apples, the cauliflower that we use, pears that we're using, um, pumpkins, and sweet potatoes. Uh, the other day I actually made sweet potato fries in the oven and they taste delicious. Highly would recommend. Um, they smelled good too. <laughs> yes, so that full list is on um, your handout. So can anyone tell me why it is important to shop local? You probably looked at your handout, but just um, give I want to have two of you answer. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it definitely is. One more. Yeah. Less transportation, so there's less uh, carbon monoxide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. They definitely are fresher, and the decreased transport is great because I know some foods travel thousands of miles just to get to the grocery store here in St. Louis. Um, so they also have peak flavor because of how fresh they are. And they're also full of antioxidants, which like Haley mentioned, fight off um, the bad things that are happening in your body. Um, and also if you have kids, getting them involved at like a farmer's market or just shopping in general really just can get them excited about healthy eating, um, which because a lot of kids don't know a lot about what different fruits and vegetables are. So just really getting them exposed to that aspect of cooking is really great. Um, so what um, farmer's markets do you guys usually go to? Um, it doesn't have to be in the winter, just in general. What, what farmer's markets do you guys go to? Soulard? Soulard is incredible. I love Soulard. Yeah, like Haley said, we both just moved here um, this past August from uh, Chicago and Milwaukee. And it is amazing how big the Soulard Farmer's Market is. Like, I don't think, at least I haven't seen one in, with, in Milwaukee like that. So it was really cool to see. Um, so that's one of the perks of living in a big city like St. Louis is that there's many different farmer's markets. Um, we also have on the handout listed a um, couple of farmer's markets that are open year round, which is great because it's hard to find fresh local produce in the winter months just because it's not as um, abundant. Um, so some of them, like you said, the Soulard Farmer's Market and then also a farmer's market in the Del Mar Loop. Um, I looked it up and they have a farmer's market that's open year round too. Um, so we also have the hours and uh, days that they're open listed on that handout as well. Um, but if you're looking for more like um, summer and spring fruits, a lot of the, um, or produce, a lot of the uh, farmer's markets open in mid to early May, and some even open as early as April, which coming from Wisconsin, that's crazy. <laughs> We're still getting snow in mid-April. <laughs> like I went to school in northern Wisconsin and we got a 12-inch snowstorm in mid-April. And I graduated on May 5th and I was like, we're gonna have snow, <laughs> it's gonna happen. <laughs> Thankfully we didn't, but. Um, so another great thing about farmer's markets is that it's a really cool way to support like the local economies and the local farmers here. I think it's really important to support like those small businesses just because, you know, like they're trying as hard as we are to make a living and everything. And it's really cool to know like who your food came from too. Like I love talking to the people at the Soulard Farmer's Market. And I mean, even smaller ones, like we live right across the street from uh, Tower Grove Park and they have one in there too. That's a great one to bring kids mm -hmm. to because it's right by the uh, playground. Uh, yeah. So your kids can play too while you are shopping. And there's also normally live music. So it's such a cool like way to support the local communities and to get mm -hmm. involved and get out there. And yeah. it's a fun thing to do on like a Sunday, Saturday or Sunday morning. Yeah, and a lot of the food that you buy in your uh, grocery stores, like Haley said, you don't know where you're getting those. It can, it could have traveled thousands of miles to get to where you are. So it, one may not taste as good, and two, you don't know who you're supporting. Mm -hmm. But wow, so, those look really good. Yeah, so I got pretty big pears. So normally you might be able to fit some in here, but the selection at Chinooks, you can see these. These are like pretty massive. What kind of, uh, these are the 
fan, oh, God. it starts with a B. Bartlett? Bart, not boss pair, that's what they are. Boss. Um, boss, yeah, so you can also use like the other kinds of pairs, the green pairs, things like that. I just like these, these are good if you leave them for a couple of days and they get super like ripe and mm -hmm. they're really nice and juicy. Um, but like I said, we don't want to forget about the apple juice. You can use whatever apple juice you want. And you just pour it into the bottom of the uh, dish. This is a little full here. Make sure it, the pears don't dehydrate when cooking. Yeah. Oh, I can <laughs> testify that the it would not be. It was still really good, and we still ate yes. it. Don't get me wrong, but they just um, were half the size. Like they just because pears do have a lot of natural water, um, we didn't like add more hydration, so they just shrunk a lot. <laughs> yeah. So when I poured on the apple juice, a little bit of the sea, like the salt, uh, cinnamon and sugar, not salt, uh, came off. So I did sprinkle a little bit more on. And then what we're gonna do here is just throw these in the microwave. That's the best part about this recipe is that you can just use the microwave. You don't even have to preheat an oven, any of that. So I'm just gonna throw these in um, for about six to eight minutes. Here, let me fix this microwave real quick. But um, cranberries like pears are excellent um, winter fruits that you can buy. Um, I personally love cranberry sauce and homemade cranberry sauce is actually better than the canned version. <laughs> it's controversial right now. But. Yes. <laughs> um, but they, uh, cranberries have our excellent source of those antioxidants again and vitamin C and also um, support a healthy GI tract. So if like you need some more regulation, they're great for mm -hmm. a healthy GI tract. Um, because of the fiber that they have, they also, um, that's how they support your GI. Yeah. Um, so um, we're closing up a little bit. We're going to wait on the pears. Um, but does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, for the cauliflower, I guess when we went um, shopping for this cooking demo, the main thing that I looked for is that even though cauliflower is one price for any of them, I usually look for the ones that are like bigger, like that you're paying for more of the white um, of the cauliflower, much less the, like the stem, because some of them there's a lot more leaves than the actual cauliflower. So that's kind of what I look for as far as um, this recipe at least. Yeah, and I mean, Honestly, you can look for, you can walk around, look for the best price, like at a farmer's market and things. Um, normally, like the Soulard one, it's pretty comparable, but some might have like slightly bigger peppers or slightly bigger things, especially in the summer months when they have a huge selection. It is nice to be able to walk down, because um, if anyone has been there before, it's like the two separate like aisles, and walk down each of those and really take a look. And it's also like just kind of fun to people watch and to walk around that area. So just taking your time with it and enjoying your time and then you can get like the best price as well. Um, they, I like these because they, these ones aren't super ripe right now but it's okay because we're baking them. Um, but if you have these and you wait about like four days or so to eat them, they get really juicy. I just, these are my personal favorite. Um, but they I'm work a big with fan any, of pears. any type of pear. Yeah, they were all the, the same price at Chinooks. They're three pounds for five dollars so. At least right now they are. So I just chose the ones that I personally liked, and I hope you guys like them too. Yeah, um, I like this recipe because sometimes when you are eating all of this like heavy food during the holidays, it's nice to have like a sweet but lighter option um, that won't make you like tip over the edge of being extremely full. Um, and they're all only about um, 130 calories for a half of them, and only one gram of fat, which is pretty good for that. Um, so like yummy holiday foods don't usually, don't have to be unhealthy. Um, yeah, another one little tip for this one is like if you want, I mean I know this is like the healthy holiday foods demo, um, but you can add, you can have it with like some frozen yogurt or like some vanilla ice cream, like a little mm -hmm. scoop. I think it shows um, it on your, um, on the recipe handout that it like pairs well with ice cream or frozen yogurt. Yeah, so you can do whatever you want with it, but this is a really healthy base. It's kind of like eating a pie without eating all like the crust. So, 
idea. So um, basically, does anyone have any other questions? Anything that we can address? Yeah. It doesn't even have to be about the demo. We're yeah. open books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In a regular oven, now I'm not sure. They only take about six to eight minutes in the microwave. So I would cook them at a lower temperature in the oven and keep an eye on them. Um, you can also look up other recipes. This recipe does call for um, the microwave specifically, um, but I'm sure there are some out there where you can bake them in the oven. You could just look up baked pears. Um, yeah, I chose this one. We don't have an oven today, so we are going with what we got today. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so basically, as a summary of what we talked about today, um, we talked about cauliflower. So could anybody tell me like one health benefit of cauliflower? Antioxidants, Antioxidants right. That's in a lot of fruits and vegetables. That will be mm -hmm. a common theme that you hear with fruits and vegetables. Anything else? Fiber. Fiber, fiber. Yeah. that's great, yeah. We want that fiber for that healthy GI tract. Um, anything else we remember about cauliflower? Anything it can be used for? Yeah, rice cauliflower yeah. is a great substitute. Yeah, it can also be used for pizza crust. Um, I know they sell like pizza crust pizza in the grocery store now. You can make your own um, or you can also buy it now. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys smell the cinnamon coming from there? I know I do. <laughs> I don't smell it yet. Maybe I'm too far away right now. Probably. But I am excited <laughs> for it. Yeah. Um, so what it, what uh, recipes do you guys use with pears, if any? Or do you just eat them straight? <laughs> eat them. I know, they're so good. I know. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, what about cranberries, besides cranberry sauce? What recipes do you guys use? Oatmeal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Cranberry and stuffing. Oh, yes. and stuffing. That would be really That's good. Awesome. Oh, that sounds really good. Wow. So you can sneakily in, have uh, fruits and vegetables, too. Yeah. <laughs> you have to cut up the apples. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to get you for the next cooking demo. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Okay, so this just dings, so we're going to check up on the pears, see how they're doing. Okay, I might leave them in for one more minute. Well, while she has those in, um, we learned a lot about just eating healthy over the holidays, too. Um, what is one way that you guys can take to your um, family gatherings to eat healthy over the holidays that you learned? Yeah. Eat before you go. Cauliflower yeah. mashed potatoes. Anything else? Salad, Salad first. first. That's one of my yeah. favorites. And then um, don't skip meals, because I know a lot of like Haley said, a lot of people tend to skip meals because they know that they're going to be eating more. But it's kind of, it goes that like, if you skip meals, you end up eating more than you usually would. Yeah. So it'd be more and more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then like uh, she said, uh, eat the best, skip the rest. What you really look forward to at your holiday gatherings, choose. And then if you are, don't just eat it because it's there. Mm -hmm. um, and then make sure that you guys take your handouts with you, uh, just because those have excellent um, like uh, swaps and alternatives for your um, holiday meal. Um, and while um, Haley's cutting those, we just want to really um, thank you guys for coming um, and really just being engaged in what we were saying. Um, I know it's a Monday. So thank yes. you guys. <laughs> they smell amazing, don't they? I don't know if it's wafted towards you guys yet, but they smell Wafted really up. good. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. yeah. I just got them now. So <laughs> I just got the smell. Okay. Yeah. So basically, you would serve them like this and take them out of the little pie pan. I don't want to flip it because we got that apple juice in the bottom. But I'm going to cut them up for you guys today just so that everyone has a chance to try a little bit of them. And then okay. we're just going to put it into the container or your um, where your mashed cauliflower was. Yeah, so I'll come around. Yeah, so depending on um, these ones were a little bit harder to start out with, so they might be a little bit harder. You could keep them in the microwave for a little bit longer if you wanted. Um, add in a little bit more cinnamon sugar. The cool thing about this recipe is that it doesn't have to be exact. It can just be 
however you like them. And they're super easy and they smell delicious. I hope they're tasting good for you. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, I've been passing the evaluations. Yeah. Any final questions? Well, like we said, we appreciate it so much that you guys took time out of your day to come to our cooking demo, and we really hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, happy holidays. <laughs> Thank you.